Hey, welcome back. Let's begin standing. So with your feet just slightly apart, join your palms together and close your eyes. Draw your awareness inward. Feel the soles of your feet open, the center of your heel bones descend, your toes spread open. Take a moment here to set an intention for your practice, what's bringing you on the mat today. And then bring your awareness to your breath. So a calm, steady breath helps to foster a calm mind, a calm spirit. So as you start to slow down your breath, visualize the movement of the diaphragm, your breath pump. Visualize the inhalation, drawing the center of the diaphragm down straight down towards your pelvic floor. Now open your eyes and start to move your arms side to side. So it's a movement taken from Tai Chi, just swinging from side to side. Let the shoulders be relaxed, your neck relax, let all the face muscles soften. And then start to side bend, reaching side to side. And as the up arm goes up and over, the opposite arm internally rotates, swings behind your back. Starting to wake up the muscles and loosen up the side body. Then hug your right knee to your chest and make circles with your ankles. One direction and the other. And then change sides. Bring your left knee up and make circles. Then lower that left leg down. Bring your right knee up. And we're going to internally and externally rotate the thigh like you're sweeping the floor with your foot. Lubricating the hip joint. And change sides now. Bring your left knee up. Same movement. Try to keep your upper body calm while you move, just isolating from the hip socket. Then we're going to go back to the arm swingings as we swing the right leg forward and back. As the knee comes up, the opposite arm comes across the body and change sides. Then finish that off and come to the top of your mat, standing with your feet apart. As you inhale, raise your arms up. And as you exhale, fold forward. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to fold forward. As you inhale, bring your hands to your shins. And as you exhale, fold. Keep this movement going now. Flow with your breath. Let go of the tension in your hips and your hamstrings as you fold, and then feel strong in the backs of the legs as you come back up. So working on contracting and lengthening. These dynamic movements that we're doing at the beginning will help to increase the flow of blood to the muscles, contracting and lengthening. Now let's step back into a lunge with the left leg back knee right underneath the hip, reach your left arm up and over to the side, and then pull back into a cactus position. So you're contracting the muscles in the lat underneath the blade, and then reaching and stretching. Then plant the left hand down and twist. Turn your right palm to face forward and reach overhead. Then turn the palm to face back and reach it behind your back. As you reach over, look up at your hand. As you reach behind your back, look down at your bottom hand. Keep this movement going here, mobilizing the shoulder and the neck. Then bring your right hand down, curl your back toes under, and lift and lower the knee. Feel your right heel, feel the muscles in your right leg. Then stretch the left leg towards straight. Drop the knee down and stretch back into half splits. Come forward and back, mobilizing the right leg now.
and then stretch back into your first downward facing dog. Connect to your breath. Slow, steady breathing in and out through your nose like how we started. Shift into plank position and feel strong in your plank. You can do this with knees down or with legs straight. I'll demonstrate with knees down. Shift the weight into your left hand and bring your right hand to your chest. Change sides. One hand plank balance. Keep your collarbones broad, your shoulder blades broad on your back. And then stretch back into downward facing dog. Step forward to the front of your mat as you inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, fold. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to fold forward. Inhale, come into a flat back. Then we're going to come into the lunge again with the reaching and contracting. So as you bend your elbow at your side like a cactus arm, feel the muscles in the back contract almost like you're pulling something down. And then you'll stretch those same muscles as you side bend. Then plant your right hand down onto the ground and reach your left arm up. With the rotation of the shoulder, looking up at the hand as you reach over and as you internally rotate, look down. We'll do this four times, moving nice and slow, controlled movement. Then take your arm up and bring your hand down for the within, lifting and lowering of your back leg. Feel your left heel, feel your left outer hip strong. Then lower the knee and stretch forward and back from half splits into the lunge. Downward facing dog, find your breath again. From down dog, come into plank position. Then set your knees down and take cat cow. Moving through flexion and extension Move with your breath. As you exhale, you'll round your back. And as you inhale, you'll come into the back bend position, spinal extension, nice and fluid with your breath. See if you can lengthen the breath and slow the breath down to help to increase the range of motion. Then stretch back into child's pose, knees wide enough for your body to fit in between. You can have toes curled under or toes pointed back. Whatever feels better for your knees and your ankles. Breathe as you hold here. Visualize the movement of your breath pump. Breathe straight down towards your pelvis. Then walk your hands over to the right. We'll get a deep stretch for your lat and side body. Now imagine your side body opening with your breath, like almost like you had gills on your side body, opening up the tension through the intercostals and then change sides. So you might have heard about the benefits of doing some breath work, which is all the rage right now. All that's great, but if you haven't opened up the pathway for the breath, you're actually gonna create more strain and stress for yourself. So poses like this help the breath practice. Now come back to center and come onto your hands and your knees. We're going to retract and then protract the scapula. You'll spread them and reach them towards the hands. Then keeping that in your spine long, we're going to do the alternate chest taps again. Lean into one side, bring your opposite hand to your chest and then go to the other. Now you can make this more challenging by going in a full plank position. I'm showing it with knees down here is the modification, but you can also do it with legs up like I'll show now. But make sure when you do that, 
you don't round or sink anywhere in your spine. It's nice and long and you're keeping the reach of your shoulder blades. You're not sinking into your shoulder blades, so to speak. Then finish that and stretch back into down dog. Lift your right leg up behind you as you inhale and as you exhale, bring it to your chest. Go forward and back, moving with your breath here. Then step your foot up by your thumb, drop your back knee an inch or two above the mat and come up into bent knee crescent. Raise your arms up. So as you hold in this position, see if you can feel your weight in the center front right heel. Let your knee track straight ahead, engage your right outer hip. Then bring hands to prayer, lean out over your knee and twist, plant your left hand, take your right arm up. Breathe in and out through your nose. Step back, downward facing dog. And then with the left leg, inhale to reach it up. Exhale to bring it to your chest. Go forward and back here a few times. Then step your foot up to your thumb Lower your back knee an inch or two above the mat and come up. As you get low in your lunge, feel your left leg turn on to support you. Strong glute, strong hip will help to inform the core. In fact, some people would argue that the hips and the glutes muscles are part of the core. Bring hands to prayer and lean out over your knee. Plant your right hand and twist. Feel your spinal muscles help you to elongate. Paraspinals, multifidi, all part of your core there. Rib cage staying connected to pelvis. Then bring your hand down, step back into the plank position. Lower to chaturanga and then lift back up. We'll go through this five times here. Now I'm showing the modification with knees down, but Feel free to do it with your legs straight, depending on your upper body strength. More important that your form is good, that you're keeping the plank lying through your spine, than if you're doing it with legs straight and losing your form. Stretch back into downward facing dog now and reconnect to your breath. Then inhale your right leg up behind you. And as you exhale, bring your knee to your right outer armpit. Go forward and back a few times, moving with your breath. Then step your foot up to your thumb. Inhale, come up into crescent with the back leg straight. Hold here. Look to find the same muscles in your right leg, right outer hip. Track the knee if it wants to cave in or twist out. Then hands to prayer, lean out over your knee. Now step your back foot an inch or two closer. Stretch your right leg towards straight or keep a little micro bend and reach your arms back behind you. Reach down through your right foot evenly. Press into your heel bone, your big toe mound and your pinky toe mound. Then plant your right hand onto the ground or onto your shin. Turn your ribs and take your right arm up. More important than how deep you go or how much you're twisting is that you still have the integrity of your spine here. So you're elongating as you're twisting. Then bring your right hand down and stretch out over your right leg. Step back to down dog. Shift to plank pose for a moment. Turn on your legs, turn on your core, and then stretch it back to downward facing dog. Again with the leg swings, inhale the left leg up. And as you exhale, bring your knee to your armpit. Come forward and back a few times, warming up your hip, integrating the movement with your core. 
and then step your foot all the way up by your thumb, come up into crescent lunge. Strong in your left leg. Breathe through your nose. Then bring the hands to prayer and lean out over your knee. Then hands to the floor. Stretch your left leg towards straight and reach your arms back behind you. Reach down into your left heel, big toe and little toe mound as you breathe your spine long. Then set your right hand down onto the shin or to the floor. Feel the spine elongate, raise your left arm. Tendency will be for your left hip to swing out to the side, out of alignment with your ankle. Instead, as you reach into your left foot, draw your left hip back into alignment with your ankle. So you reach into your back heel. Then bring your hand down and fold forward over your leg as you reconnect to your breath. Exhalation to ground you and to release the tension. The inhalation helps to bring in fresh energy. Stretch back into down dog. Then either come into plank or knees down plank for some push-ups. As you hover at the low position, make sure that your core and your glutes are turned on before you come up. If you feel the push-up is too much, you're welcome to just hold a static plank. Otherwise, building upper body, strength here with the push-up. Bust out a few more of these. And then stretch back into downward facing dog, always making sure with the push-up you're moving slow and controlled. Now alternate reaches here. Bring your right hand to your left outer shin or ankle as you press into your left hand and then change sides. So we're working on stability with an overhead reach as we're twisting. So it's great for strengthening the upper body and the shoulders, and you're getting a stretch at the same time, which is pretty good. Go through a round, one more round each side, and then walk your hands back to your feet. Hook your big toes and fold forward. Release that and position your feet so you can come into a squat comfortably. If your heels want to lift up off the ground when you squat, you're welcome to slide something underneath your heels, but this is a functional movement pattern that we should work on developing, cultivating, and spending some time in every day. Now, I'm going to add a little twist to this position. So you'll slide the back of the right shoulder down the knee and then reach the left arm and then change sides alternating side to side here, moving at a pace that feels right for you. In this class, we're doing these more dynamic movements to see the effect that it has on the body. And then we're gonna do some hops in and out of crow pose, practicing getting comfortable hopping into the hands and then coming back to the squat, just feeling what that's like. And then maybe you'll get a little balance point there and hold if it feels comfortable to before you come back to your squat. Now let's take standing legs wide apart forward fold with the fingers pointed back. So you get a wrist and forearm stretch as you're getting a stretch for your hamstrings, for your adductors. Your toes point straight ahead in this one. Breathe into the good stretch you're feeling there. How good does it feel to stretch? Kind of nice. All right, walk your hands to the front of your mat and then step back. And we're just gonna do a little bit of a forearm plank torture here. Get to hit the core a little more. So as you come into the forearm plank, you know, uh, turn on your leg muscles, resist gravity with your front body. 
Gravity is trying to hold you down, man. So resist without straining. Always in yoga, we're finding what is the right amount of effort to put in. So you don't want to sink, but you don't want to overdo it. All right. Lower your hips down and come into Sphinx pose. And then bend your left knee and see if you can reach back with your hand for your foot. Now you can stay upright in the Sphinx as you catch your foot, or you can lower down like I'm doing. If you have a good amount of back bend, you're a bendy back bender, you could stay in the Sphinx with the elbow right underneath your shoulder. But if you have any lower back compression, you can do this modification that I'm showing. And then change sides. One of the things that I noticed teaching yoga for the past 18 years or so, it's been, it's been a minute, uh, is that in class when uh, newer students would come or a less, um, you know, not advanced, but like, you know, maybe they're not as flexible as strong. Oh, it's bend both knees now and reach back with the hands for the feet is that uh, they would try to do, no matter what the teacher said, like, hey, you could do this modification, no matter what the teacher said, what the other people in the class were doing, they just do it automatically, they'd force their body aggressively, and it might not be so beneficial. So often, for solidarity's sake, I'll take the easy, I'll take the, not the easy, I'll take the, the uh, more humane variation of pose. So we can, we can chill together or work at the right level. Lower yourself down and open your arms to the side. And remember, the movement is so good for you. So let go of any judgment already. I'm getting to the judgment right there. Let go of any judgment about like what's good or bad or I'm a, I'm a good level or not. Okay, so from here, we're gonna bring the right knee out to the side and the left arm forward. We're gonna do a little uh, lizard crawling here and then change sides. So you're gonna slide along the floor, or if you're on the rug, you're gonna rug burn along the floor and do alternating sides here. So slide into the stretch and then slide the other way. A more progressed version of this, you can do it with um, your body hovering above the floor. We'll get to that maybe one day here now. Let's bust out some scorpion. So we're gonna bend the right knee and then reach the leg up and over as you open up the left chest shoulder. Notice I dropped the left hand slightly below shoulder height for this first round. And then roll out of that and uh, we'll change sides, bend the left knee and reach the left leg behind as you open up through the right shoulder. And then let's go back and forth a couple rounds. Maybe you can sneak the hand up a little higher towards shoulder height if it feels okay on the chest shoulder. Go to the other side. And then go to the other side, the left side. And then back to the right. And change sides. And we'll hold here, stretching the left chest, shoulder, breathe into it. On your exhalations, feel how much you can relax. Let go of the strain. And then change sides. And just feel how much the breath can help you to surrender whatever inner resistance you're experiencing. And so our movement practice starts to become our mantra for meditation. Now bend both knees, reach back for your hands and feet again and see if you can start to lift up into the back bend. So before we stayed kind of low, 
Now you can start to uh, reach the shins up and back, depending on your flexibility, what your situation is, however much movement you got. Don't force or strain, especially if you got a history of lower back. Then lower yourself down, press up into a plank, and stretch back into downward dog. From down dog, set your knees down with your toes curled under, interlock your fingers, turn your palms inside out and reach up for toe torture with a shoulder stretch here. Urdhva Badanguliasan and Vajrasan, sometimes called, sometimes people call this one the mountain, but um, yeah, this one kind of changed sides now, changed the interlocking hands. You could argue that this looks like a little more like a mountain than another mountain. Then clasp your hands behind your back and spin your shoulders back. Let the chest muscles open up. All right, release that and then point the toes back and we're gonna do an alternating reach here. So you'll turn the palm back, reach the hand back and stretch the other arm up and over and go side to side. And then you can try a lift, like a bridge lift. So you can plant the hand, bring the other hand to your chest, and then reach up and over as you lift your hips. If it feels gnarly on your knees or your ankles, then please modify. You can just take a bridge pose from your back. You don't have to do this reversed shin thing. You just lift and lower from bridge. But if it feels good to stretch in this position, keep going through it. Then turn your hands around so that the fingers point back, thumbs point out to the side, walk your hands back, and we'll do a few neck stretches here. So reach, tip your chin back and look back, and then chin to your chest as you exhale. As you're doing these neck stretches, let your femur bones drop down, and then turn the hands around and lift your hips up. And you can stretch the neck here, reaching the chin back. Then lower yourself down and come onto your back. Now we're going to bust out some bridges of Madison County. Lift your hips up, then bring your right knee up and lift and lower. Now, if you got a near ankle situation and this is too gnarly to do, with one leg, you can just do both feet down and lift and lower like that, but I'm showing the one-legged bridge, which is gonna be more demanding. And then change sides, bring the left knee up and lift and lower. Now notice how I'm lifting the buttock and lifting up from the hips as opposed to thrusting the ribs up. Focus on your core, keeping your rib cage connected to your pelvis. So the front and the back ribs stay connected to the pelvis as you're lifting and lowering. Now let's um, lower the hips down and take the legs straight up for leg lifts. We're gonna start one leg at a time. So um, alternating legs. Keep the legs as straight as possible. Keep your upper body calm and still as you're lifting and lowering. If you're feeling it all in your lower back, in this version, you can put your hands underneath your buttock. If you'd like to advance it, you can stay in a, you can come into a curled up position as you lift and lower the legs. Now lower your head down, we'll do double legs, lower a third of the way, another third of the way, and then come back up. Third of the way, third of the way, as low as you can, and then back up. Now I'm gonna show with my hands underneath the buttock, which is a modification if you can feel your lower back wanting to pop up. So you wanna keep the bottom ribs contained. You don't want the bottom ribs and lumbar spine to lift up towards the ceiling. Now bring the legs up into tabletop, hands behind your head. And then we're gonna twist up and over to the left leg as you lower the right and then come back to center and go to the other side 
and alternate now side to side here, coordinating the movement. You're not taking breaks right now, are you? Okay, now finish that off. Open your arms to the side, cross your right knee over your left, and cross your right elbow under your left. You can take eagle arms or you can grab shoulder blades like I'm showing. And then we're going to crunch up and bring the knees and elbows together and then lower down as the knees and elbows reach away from each other. We do this five times, abdominal torture. All right, then change the cross and give me five. Now, if this abdominal series is too difficult for you, like you feel your abdominals have fatigued too much, that's not so, so good. Uh, you wanna feel a burn, but not like where they're too fatigued because then they can't support your spine. So, you know, take it at your own speed. All right, let's do a little supine twist now. Open the arms to the side and cross your left ankle over your right knee as you let your legs fall over to the right. Come back to center and change sides. Then come back to center, take Baddha legs, soles of the feet together, knees wide apart, and cactus arms. Open up the chest and the shoulders, the inner legs, and the adductors. Now if your adductors are especially tight, you may want to take some support. So if you feel like there's too much strain here, you could slide pillows or blocks underneath your knees or your legs. Similarly with your arms, if your shoulders are real tight, you can slide something underneath your wrist or hands so that they'll actually be able to relax better if there's some, some support. Out of solidarity, say, for the non-prop people, I'll be showing without prop, but I would actually prefer to use props when I do this one because I get the limited range from the shoulder from surfing and uh, with the hips why are the hips so tight what the heck have i been doing i don't know all right now bring your legs back together and we're going to come into a shavasana with the legs stretched out and the arms at your side. So one of the things that we want to practice in yoga is being able to separate ourselves from the thoughts. It's not that we're trying to arrest the thinking, but not be identified with it. Often we can get into mental patterns where we want to uh, fight or defend the thinking. But uh, that's so crazy because the thoughts aren't even us. They're just coming in and out, you know, and we can become so fixed in our, our thought patterns. So in yoga, philosophy would say that we're not really those thoughts 
And as we become more firmly established in meditation and less identified with the thinking, we can kind of get a break from that, like, uh, you know, having to defend our viewpoint, our stance. It can really make you uh, kind of a jerk. No, <laughs> it gets you real riled up, gets you, uh, gets, you know, I don't, I'll just speak for myself. I can feel, uh, you know, anger or resentment or, and, you know, like justified, like, oh, yeah, I, I know right in this situation because uh, some thoughts that I experience which sounds crazy when you think of it that way. But uh, again, there's some more thinking. So let's just get an opportunity to take space from that and practice sinking into stillness. And then here at the end of our Shavasana, perhaps ask for the thoughts to be put on a higher plane or to tap into a frequency. Many great thinkers, you could, again, you could argue if they were a great thinker or not, but uh, folks like Nikola Tesla or uh, Einstein, they, Nikola Tesla especially felt that the ideas were just coming to him, that it wasn't, he was nothing special, almost like he was an antenna or receiver. So humbly, we can ask to be tuned into a frequency that can help to better us, inspire us, help us to be better people, something like that. So roll over to your side and press yourself up. Bring your palms together. And in gratitude for the practice, for the time that we had together to breathe, to move, and to say some type of weird prayer after a long rambling speech in Shavasana, we'll say namaste. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.